Mr. Tony Scott. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, we'll be reading it uh, day by day, the report. Day one. We have eaten our way across the Atlantic on a nice cruise ship. We are in Malaga, Spain. There are a lot of foreign people here. The only ones who speak English are the ones who want to sell something to you. We went sightseeing today and saw a cathedral built in the 14th century and a stone wall built by Julius Caesar and a statue of a horse with a man sitting on it with a pigeon on the man's head. There's a strange piece of plumbing in my hotel bathroom. Day two. Today we saw a cathedral built in the 14th century and the stone wall built by Julius Caesar. I asked the maid what that thing is in the hotel bathroom. She blushed and ran out of the room. I'm very confused about the pesetas, not being sure what they are worth. For my record of purchase, I'm writing them down this way. One silver bracelet costs three big coins, one middle-sized coin and two little coins. This will probably look strange on my custom declaration. One woman in our group tried to exchange her money in a grocery store. She understood the guy to say the Spanish use potatoes instead of pesetas. Third day, Granada. There are a lot of foreigners here too. One man in our group has spent all summer studying Arabic since Granada is known as a Moorish city. Today he learned that Arabic hasn't been spoken here since the Moors left in 1491. This afternoon we saw a 14th century cathedral and a stone wall built by Julius Caesar. And it looked like the same statue of a horse with a man sitting on it with a pigeon on the man's hat. The hotel here has that same thing in the bathroom. Day 4. Driving through the Spanish countryside today, we saw three different herds of goats. Looked like about three or four hundred goats in each herd. I can't imagine what they do with all these goats. We are seeing some interesting things, but it isn't easy to understand the local guides. I think the one we had today had studied English from a Japanese teacher in Czechoslovakia. I hope I'm losing weight with this continental breakfast. I don't know when I've eaten so little for breakfast and so much for the other meals. The service in the dining rooms is so slow that I get hungry again between the courses. I have bought a few little souvenirs and it took me an hour and 50 minutes to pack tonight. Day 5. Today we saw a 14th century cathedral and the stone wall built by Julius Caesar. Uh, and I think the highway we were on was also built by Mr. Caesar. It hasn't stood up as the walls, as well as the walls have. We also saw another statue of a, ho of a horse and a man sitting on it with a pigeon on the man's hat. And the hotel bathroom here has one of those same things. I asked the bellboy what it was, but he just walked away. Our tour group is turning out to be very nice and we find that we have a lot of things in common. Mostly, what we have in common is head colds and the tourist disease. Today we saw some more herds of goats. I find that I'm spending a whole lot of money for postcards and airmail stamps. One woman in our group who has traveled a lot says she, she asks each of her friends before she leaves home, which do you want, a postcard or a pillbox? <laughs> they cost about the same. Airmail for one letter from Spain costs two middle-sized coins and the stamps are so big. I had one letter wait for airmail and when I put on enough stamps it weighed so much more that I had to put one more stamp. <laughs> The Spanish mailboxes are not much like ours at home, there is no collection time on them and the hole at the top is very big instead of being a narrow little slot. Sixth day. Last evening I saw the barber of Sevilla. He gave me a very good haircut for just two big coins and two little coins. Our tour is so well organized that even the emergencies are supposed to be arranged in advance. If you are going to fall and break your arm, they want you to do it between 3 and 5 in the afternoon, after lunch and before the cocktail hour, and on weekdays only. I mailed another big bunch of airmail postcards today. We did not see a 14th century cathedral today. It was 13th century cathedral. I've been in so many churches this week that my clothes are beginning to smell like incense and altar candles and I find myself genuflecting even when I enter the hotel dining room. 
day seven. A uh, manual souvenir shop in Lisbon has some Portuguese souvenirs that are extraordinary. The ordinary ones are made in Japan. <laughs> These are made in Hong Kong. Today we visit a 14th century cathedral and saw a stone wall built by Julius, Julius what's his name. And a statue of a horse with a man sitting on it. There was no pigeon on the man's head, but anyone could see that the pigeon had been there. <laughs> Because there was a feather on the man's shoulder, I think the Portuguese language was invented by Spaniards with the loose dentures. Day 8. Today I found a real bargain to buy. There was a nice young man standing on a street corner. He spoke very good English. He said his father owned the Omega watch company in Switzerland and that his father sent him one watch every week to sell to prove his ability as a salesman. He said he was interested in international friendship, so he preferred to sell the watches to tourists at a great reduction in price. He told me I was the lucky tourist for this week. It was a $350 watch and he offered it uh, to me for only $85 for international friendship, he said. I asked if it kept good time and he said, did you ever see an Omega watch that didn't keep good time? Of course I hadn't. He said it was a new model, so silent that no one could hear it tick. <laughs> of course I bought it because it was a good bargain and besides I'm interested in international friendship too. Ninth day. Today I found a bathroom scale in the hotel and I was very surprised and pleased to see that my weight had gone down from 175 when I left home to 90. <laughs> Then I learned that the scale was marked in kilometers or something like that and instead of losing a lot I had gained a few pounds. Now we are back in Spain and we have to use pesetas again. I find that I have two and a half pounds of Portuguese coins left over and nobody wants them. I think I'll take them home and melt them down and make a miniature statue of a horse with a man sitting on it with a pigeon on the man's hat and sell it to some tourists. <laughs> Uh, day 10. Now I've seen an uh, Omega watch that doesn't keep good time. It doesn't even keep, keep bad time. Because there are an, aren't any little wheels or anything else inside it. Of course, that nice young Mr. Omega personally guaranteed, but he is in Lisbon and now I'm now in Madrid. I still believe in international friendship, but not quite so much as before. Today we could understand the local guide, but it was so foggy we couldn't see what he was describing. Day 11. Today we didn't see any cathedral, it was a mosque instead. The difference between a cathedral and a mosque is that in a mosque there isn't any place to sit down except in the restrooms and then you have to face east. A little mosque is called a mosquito. Finally, I found out what that thin thing, where that thing it is in the hotel bathrooms. And I used it today. It is to soak your underwear and drip dry things in, in detergent before you wash them, of course. One of the ladies in our bus uses it for something else. She keeps ice in it to chill the champagne. Twelfth day. Everybody noticed when we were loading today that the aisle of the bus is getting narrower. We have so much souvenir junk on our bus that the roadside vendors are trying to buy things from us. I have spent all morning packing for another move, but all of the things just wouldn't go into the bags. Finally, I took five pounds of dirty clothes to the post office and mailed it home in a box to my landlady. I marked it unsolicited gift, value $9.95. The postage on it was 14 big coins and seven middle-sized ones. Uh, thirteenth day. Now we're back on the ship and ready to eat our way across the Atlantic again. Everybody has a cold except the ship doctor. <coughs> Final day, day fourteenth. Funchal Madeira. This is a beautiful place which has everything except level ground. The principal products are wine and lace. In the shops they give you so much free wine that you don't realize what you're paying for the lace. <coughs> In Funchal, the ship took on 1200 tons of water, one ton of fresh fruit and vegetables, and the passengers brought on two tons of souvenirs and Madeira wine. I think I call this my animal trip. I ate like a pig, drank like a fish, followed the guide like a sheep, carried souvenirs like a burrow, and stayed happy as a lark. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you, Tony, for 
the intro and I'm wonderful. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, to all of you, and I'm very happy that, uh, as I said, that uh, you're coming after dinner and coming and join us in our crew show. So, are you ready for the show? Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, my crew is preparing right out there, and I just would like to add some more words. Of course, I have to admit that we have a lot of talented people, but we are actually not professionals. We are slightly better than that. <laughs> and, uh, of course, uh, I just wanted to add as well, I never mentioned before, uh, once when we are getting on board and they are hiring us, there is always a question by Human Resource, have you got any experience in Hollywood or in Broadways? <laughs> and then, uh, yes, and then that's how we come on board so we can perform for you tonight. So now, just to encourage a little bit the crew that are standing right in the lobby to come on stage, I would like to have group by group a big applause to let them know that you are here. So if I ask first time the yellow group, if you could please clap your hands. Yeah. And now the blue group. Yeah. Okay. And the red group. Yeah. 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 All right, so now we are ready. Green. And green. The green group. Now, like I said, we have a lot of talented people and you will see them one by one coming on stage, but we would like to open, uh, open the crew show with one of our cabin attendants, one of our guys who is working in housekeeping, and uh, he is Albano, and he will sing a song for us as an opening. <laughs> I need your help. Easy song. I won't have a one star room. The worst would be yeah. Blue Ridge Mountain, Channel Tell River. Life is older, older than the tree. Old the mountain, growing like a breeze. The country road. Take me home to the place I belong, West Virginia, mouth, mouth, mouth. Take me home, country road. All my memories gather around me. My last lady brings us to the water. Dark and dusty, winter on the sky, the sweetest of moonshine, tears of in my heart, country road, take me home to the place I belong, West Virginia, mouth, my mouth, take me home, the country road. I hear her voice in the morning how she calls me The radio reminds me of my home far away Very love the road I get a feeling that I should have been Yesterday, yesterday, sing along Country road, take me home To the I belong Take me home, country road. Country road, take me home to the place I belong. West Virginia, mouth, my mouth. Take me home, the country road. Take me home, the country road. and present the communication on board. Of course, as you know, we are an American company and we all speak English, that is our official language of the crew as well. In the crew mess, of course, when they sit down, we have like 10 different nationalities on board, so they all speak their own language. Sometimes in the kitchen something goes wrong, I can hear them their own language as well, speaking, that I don't understand most of the time. But, uh, so, uh, there are situations when uh, we really have to make sure that everybody gets the same 
uh, message that we are passing uh, through and then that can end up sometimes also in a funny way and that is what we would like to now present it to you with all of our head of departments meaning the chef, our housekeeper and our restaurant manager so I would like to call them now on stage there they are and of course our captain right now in the wheelhouse so I will be acting as a captain if you don't mind at this time <laughs> So I have a message that I would like you, Max, to share uh, with all of our head of department and with the entire crew. Tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. there will be an eclipse of the sun. Since this is something that doesn't happen every day, gather the crew together on the deck in their best clothes to see this phenomenon happening. If it is raining, we will not be able to see it. In that case, we will gather together in the mess. Please make sure everybody understands. Thank you. Thank you, Chava. Stanislava, we have a very important message to pass to the crew and then it's related to the captain. So, by the order of the captain, there will be an eclipse of the sun at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. If it's raining, we won't be able to see it from the deck in our best clothes. In that case, the disappearance of the sun will be watched from the mess. This doesn't happen every day. Please, pass it. Thank you, hotel manager. So I'm passing this message to our chef. By the order of the captain, we will watch in our best clothes how the sun disappears in the mess at 9 a.m. The captain will tell us if it's going to rain. This is something that doesn't happen every day. Thank you. I will pass the message to Attila, our receptionist. If it's raining in the mess at 9 a.m., which is something that doesn't happen every day, the captain in his best clothes will disappear. So, I will pass the message for the whole crew. Tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., the captain will disappear. It doesn't happen every day. 